Hello, my name is Henry Silverman, and I would like to do a short presentation regarding medical ethics. Well, first, what is ethics? Ethics is the branch of study dealing with what is the proper course of actions for individuals interacting with each other. Essentially, it is the study of right and wrong in human endeavors. It answers the question, what should I do in relationship to my interactions with other individuals. As such, medical ethics is a branch of ethics that pertains to medical practice, pertaining to the doctor-patient relationship. Medicine asks, what can be done for the patient? Whereas ethics asks, what should be done for the patient? Essentially, everything that we could do for the patient doesn't necessarily mean that we should be doing that for the patient. What is the distinction between ethical and legal obligations? Medical ethics and the law are not necessarily the same thing. Legal regulations represent broad categories of actions. It cannot cover every action that occurs in human behaviors, and it cannot also cover every interaction that occurs in the doctor-patient relationship. As such, the law does not cover all of the appropriate interactions between doctors and patients. Hence, a breach of ethical ob obligation may not necessarily mean a breach of law. This slide shows the stages of moral thought as envisioned by Dr. Kohlberg in the 1950s. A trial defines what is right and wrong in terms of what authorities say. An adolescent defines what is right and wrong in terms of group loyalty from friends, family, a gang, from the nation. Whereas an adult is expected to view what is right and wrong from universal standards of justice, human rights, and human welfare. Kohlberg believed that education is what stimulates moral growth through these different stages. The father of Western medicine is considered Hippocrates. The oath in the Hippocratic corpus can be seen as pioneering modern medical ethics with a universal and humanitarian appeal. On what do we base our ethical standards or our ethical behavior? Well, let me answer this question by going through two problems, what we will call trolley problems. In the first trolley problem, we have a trolley that is running down a hill at a fast speed, heading towards five people at the bottom of the street. When it reaches them, it will surely kill all of them. You notice that there is a switch next to you that you could direct the trolley to a side path where there is one man standing, and once you do, it will be the one man that dies. So what do you do? Do you let the train go down its directed path, killing five people, or do you pull the switch and kill only one? A lot of people would answer the question and say, pull the switch because five is much worse than one. This is an example of what we call utilitarian ethics or consequentialistic reasoning where we base our ethical decisions based on the consequences. Let's visit another trolley problem. Here the trolley is again running down a hill at fast speed aimed at five people at the bottom which it will surely kill. However at this time you are standing on a bridge with a fat man next to you. If you push the fat man off the bridge the trolley will stop and kill the fat man. But you've saved five people. You don't throw yourself over because you're too skinny and you will not stop the train. So what do you do? A lot of people would hesitate to throw the fat person over the bridge because they feel like they're more of a causal agent in the killing of the fat man. Specifically, one is thinking that one needs to respect persons and one should not kill. And this is more reflective of a deontological ethic. This slide shows that an act actually consists of three parts. One, you have the agent. Second, you have the act itself. 
And then third, you have the consequences. Modern ethical theories ask the question, is this action ethical? In order to determine that, one could look at the consequences of the action, which would reflect a utilitarian ethics. One could look at the act itself, the thought being that some acts have right-making characteristics that one has a duty to follow. And this is known as a deontological ethics. Finally, ethical theories look at the agent and ask whether this acting agent or physician is a virtuous person. And if the answer is yes, then the concept is that the virtuous person knows how to act. Let's explore these ethical theories in slightly more detail. First, utilitarian ethics encompasses the notion that consequences alone determine right and wrong action. One of the fathers of utilitarianism is John Stuart Mill. Utilitarian ethics favor acts in which one produces the greatest good for the greatest number of people. It seeks to maximize aggregate well-being of society as a whole. Some problems with utilitarian ethics include, well, how does one define aggregate welfare? Also, how does one define the good? Is it merely happiness, pleasure, or some other measures? Also, the principle of utility is open to the objection that it may sacrifice the rights of the minority for the sake of the happiness of the majority. This slide shows some aspects of the ontologic ethics. This ethical theory considers that some acts are intrinsically right regardless of the consequences. This is, was championed by Immanuel Kant in the 18th century. The ontological ethics is a duty-based ethics. Again, as mentioned before, it favors the right over the good. The ontologists deny that what ultimately matters is an action's consequences. They claim that what matters is the kind of action it is. Again, certain acts have right-making characteristics, and it is our duty to adhere to these acts, again, regardless of the consequences. Some acts that have right-making characteristics include honesty, fidelity, do not kill, do not steal, and respect for autonomy. Alternatively, one could follow the virtue ethics approach that focuses on attitudes, disp dispositions, or character traits that enable us to be and to act in ways that develop our human potential. Examples of virtues include honesty, courage, faithfulness, trustworthiness, and integrity. The theory states what is ethical is what develops moral virtues in ourselves and our communities. Finally, we have the principles approach to ethical decision making. The principle of medical ethics include autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. You may notice that principles one and four are the ontological principles, and two and three are consequentialistic principles. The theory of principalism includes identifying the main principles and conflicts in a case and attempts to balance the principles and determine which principle is more important in that particular setting or ethical dilemma. What is the usefulness of principles? Well, principles provides a framework for discussing ethical issues and for medical decision making. Also, one needs to be aware that principles are not absolute, as several principles may conflict with each other in a particular situation. For example, autonomy versus beneficence, or autonomy versus justice. Accordingly, when we have conflicts of principles, one must balance conflicting principles against each other to derive a course of action. For example, Frequently, we have autonomy versus beneficence. Who determines the good of the patient? How do we know that a patient is able to make decisions? As we go through these modules, we'll provide many different cases in which we have a conflict between autonomy and beneficence.
As we go through these modules, we will revisit many of the concepts mentioned in this presentation.